948 having arrived, I'd like to call the uh, call to order the public hearing uh, for the purpose of receiving comment on the proposal to establish the Tamara Dittman Special Service Area number SW50 and provide for the levy of taxes for the purpose of paying the cost of providing special services in and for that area. So I believe that Jody, thank you very much. Uh, Jody Wolnick is here from the Water Resources Department. Uh, she's here to uh, answer any questions. Uh, is there anyone who would like to comment uh, on this uh, SSA? You would come forward? Okay. Uh, if not, um, that's a quick meeting. Uh, the public hearing is closed at, you know, uh, 9.49. <laughs> so, uh, but thank you, thank Jody, you. thank you Mr. very much for being you available. Have a motion yeah, you have to do a motion, Mr. Chairman. Do I, who is speaking? Okay. I'm not seeing that. You need a motion to open and close it. Oh, no? Oh, okay. okay. Never mind. So, but but thank you for the help. I'll need all the help I can get. <laughs> so, okay. With that, the public meeting is closed on that subject. having arrived, I'd like to call the King County Board meeting for April 8th, 2014 to order. I'd like to ask the clerk to please call the roll. Allen. Here. Auger. Here. Valerio. Here. Castro. Here. Davis. Donahue. Here. Ford. Here. Foz. Here. Gillum. Here. Heyman. Here. O'Shea. Here. Kenyon. Here. Kazarik. Here. Lash. Here. Lewis? Here. Molina? Here. Pollock? Here. Jeffro? Here. Silva? Here. Smith? Here. Sarah? Present. Taylor? Vasquez? Here. Winnecke? Here. Okay, we have a quorum. Uh, next on the agenda are the pledge and the prayer. Um, I'm just going to uh, make a couple of uh, introductions here. Um, you know that Mike Kenyon, uh, one of the members of our board, uh, has recently been recognized by Prairie Farmer Magazine as an Illinois Master Farmer. He's going to be recognized today, but I'm going to ask Mike if you uh, would do the honors of leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance, so please rise. from Crossway Chapel, Fox Valley, in North Aurora, if you'd come forward and lead us in prayer. Thank you. I was really surprised when Chairman Lawson asked me to come and pray and told me I had 45 minutes. Is that the case? <laughs> I guess not. enough trouble. No. <laughs> Thank you for the privilege of coming and leading in prayer. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we are grateful for our servants who, who watch over our county and take care of all of the key issues that they'll be facing today. I pray for wisdom. I pray for um, direction and leading by your hand that you would even surprise them with the progress they make today in this meeting. Thank you for um, your mercy to us through Jesus, your son, who gives us life by his death and resurrection from the dead. And we thank you and give you praise for your greatness and your goodness and how you watch over us, how you, you pour out rain on the just and the unjust alike, that you are merciful and gracious to us. Lord, we long for the day that Jesus would return and make all things right. Until then, we work hard um, for the goodness of people around us, and we work hard for your glory. I pray for your mercy on this meeting, for your direction, and for your wisdom today, that you would um, give the Kane County Board here all that they need to accomplish all that you would want them to. And we pray this together in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. 
Thank you, Pastor Richardson. Uh, we're going to defer approval of the minutes from uh, March to our next meeting so that uh, everyone has uh, adequate time to review them. Uh, so we'll go straight to the presentations and discussion. So, um, recognition of County Board Member uh, Mike Kenyon by Prairie Farmer Magazine as Illinois Master Farmer. I would like um, Mr. Kenyon and T.R. Smith, I believe that T.R. is our Master of Ceremony for this, also, Steve, uh, Steve Arnold, if I'm not mistaken, you're in one of the pews here. Uh, if you'd come forward from the Kane County Farm Bureau. Also, Janice Hill, are you in the room this morning? Yes, yes okay. So would you come forward to the, uh, the area right about here? Everybody come forward, and I believe that Master of Ceremony is uh, T.R. Smith. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Kenyon. Uh, oh, thank you very much, Steve. <laughs> uh, yeah, usually you don't need a microphone. Uh, today we're honoring uh, Mike Kenyon of the King County Board for uh, his uh, presentation as uh, a member of the, uh, King, of the Illinois Master Farmer Association. This is an association. It's very much akin to an Academy Awardship. There's only four members. What are you laughing about, Mike? <laughs> you don't have a face for an Academy Awards, but you're a hell of a farmer. <laughs> uh, where was I now? <laughs> Only four. This, uh, where was I? Only four. You were saying, you were saying nice things about Mike. Yeah. <laughs> One of, uh, one of only four farmers, there are 79,000 farm families in the state of Illinois. Every year the farm, uh, uh, organ the farm community through the uh, Illinois uh, Progressive Farmer Magazine uh, picks four farmers throughout the state. And uh, when I picked up my magazine this month and I saw Mike's picture on the cover, my first reaction was, well, you know what, it's about time. As, 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 as long as I know Mike, uh, he has been a credit to the agricultural community. Uh, this award is not only given for the best farmers out there, because we have farmers that can grow 300 bushel acre corn and 100 bushel acre soybeans, but it doesn't mean as much as a farmer that gives back to the community. And Mike has really been involved in his community. Uh, let me read a little bit uh, what I've got here. Prairie Farmer Magazine, which have a, has a circulation of 80,000. Uh, Prairie Farmer editor Clifford Gregory stated that the Master Farmer Program in 1925 is a way of recognizing the finest, finest farmers in, in Illinois. From the very beginning, the award, the award was unique and that a significant portion of the judges' scoring hinged on the farmers' community involvement. <coughs> Today that tr tradition remains. King County Farmer Mike Kenyon received the award for 2014 for both his dedication to the family farming community. His community involvement has always been outstanding, serving not only on the King County Board, but the King County Farm Bureau Board for more than 20 years, in which time he served as President, Vice President, and is currently the Secretary Treasurer. He has served in every office of the South Elgin JCs and received the Lifetime Achievement Award in 2011. Today he works with feeding greater Elgin initiatives on hunger issues. So Mike, I would love to present you with this plaque which signifies you are a master farmer in the state of Illinois. With us today we have Steve Arnold, who is the executive director of the Kane County Farm Bureau. And Steve uh, and Mike have uh, endeavor to make King County a premier farm organization in, in the state. Steve, do you have anything to add? Yes, I do. Um, Prairie Farmer recognizes master farmers based on uh, three traditions that go back to 1925 when they first started these awards. And those traditions are farming excellence, community stewardship, and agricultural leadership. And I don't think anybody embodies community stewardship more than uh, Mike Kenyon. Uh, Mike is the first King County farmer in over 30 years to win this award and uh, congratulations Mike.
Yes, I would definitely like to personally thank Mike Kenyon for his leadership and support in farmland protection and also for teaching me about farming here in Kane County and in his commitment. Thank you very much, Anna. Long before I came on the board, Mike Kenyon was the advocate for agriculture on the Kane County Board. He was about the only farmer involved, and whenever an agricultural issue came up, Mike was always at the forefront. Now, uh, there's the two of us serving on the Ag Committee, and in the last year and a half that we've had the Ag Committee, we've made some significant strides. But I think uh, having one of our own members uh, being deemed as a master farmer he adds an awful lot of credibility to our committee. So thank you very much, Mike. Thank you. Okay, congratulations, Mike, and thank you very much, TR, Steve, and Janice. Okay, next up is uh, recognition of the animal rescue volunteers. Um, I'm gonna ask Barb Jeffers uh, and Rob Saceda and uh, all of the volunteers in the audience, can you please come forward? And Bob, I'm going to turn it over to you as our master of ceremony. Thank you, Chairman. <laughs> Do you know what, Barb? Uh, Barb, you know what? I'm going to ask you if you can bring people up here, so okay. maybe um, under the screen and. He's the caboose. The Is it on? Um, while we're waiting, I want to make a few words. Robert's queuing up a video for you to dim, uh, view shortly. Um, what you see behind me, and not all of them, is a representation of people who gave of their generosity and time to come out on such a short notice to help animal control, which was uh, to move animals to a better place, farm animals, over 80 animals were moved in less than 24 hours on such a short notice through social media and presentation. What you see before you is the commitment of an animal community for those individuals who felt the need that animals should be treated much more humanely than they were. And what you also see is a commitment to this county of individuals who came out with their trucks and their hitches and their families and their supplies and their support to support a need that we couldn't have not mobilized in ourselves in three months, would have taken three months. So Robert Saceda from Animal Control and his staff did an outstanding job of organizing this event in such a short notice. And what you have before you are just a representation of staff and individuals in our community and outside of our community, which shows you what a wonderful, awesome community we have in Kane County for individuals who 
wake up and see something in a paper and rise to action on such a short notice. So I have before you some representation of those individuals, because this is not all of them. We had close to 100 volunteers who came out in addition to these guys, we had veterinarians come out too. We had five who gave of their time, their generosity to help us put animals in a better place. So I'd like to we'll just put introduce you to these individuals. Unfortunately, you will not um, have an opportunity to see the video we were trying to capture. Just to see some of the movement that happened. There were llamas and horses and chickens and <coughs> goats and donkeys uh, and turkeys <laughs> and alpacas. Uh, but I'd like to um, turn this over to Robert Salcedo, who did an outstanding job in planning this uh, along with his staff in making this happen. So animals, over 80 animals, are now in a safer place, a safer environment. And those environments were also done, uh, offered us free lodging in their farms. Robert? Well, thank you. As Bob said, this is a small representation of the group that actually came out, put their arms around Kane County Animal Control, and helped us get the job done that we needed to get done on March 11th. They showed up at 7.45, and they worked till 7 at that night, along with OEM, uh, Kane County uh, Department of Maintenance came out and helped. Um, the Sheriff's Department was there along with us. So uh, we just want to thank each and every one of you uh, from the bottom of our hearts, um, the veterinarians that came out in droves to help us. Uh, these animals were so malnourished, they needed that immediate attention, and we got it. So, like, like Barb said, thank you guys. And, uh, oh, how can I forget? Even other animal controls here in Kane County reached out to help us. Um, Elgin uh, Animal Control was right there with us, arm in arm, um, coaching me through a couple of the issues when it comes to keeping track of Thousands uh, of malnourished and mistreated animals were rescued today from a... Well, when you're doing like an investigation, making sure I kept everything perfect so that the case could move on. And uh, just with their, with their knowledge was so great. So thank you guys to every one of you. Thank you, County Board, for giving us the opportunity to show. Actually, here's one of our events right here. Oh, we have the video. Is there sound? ...a new undisclosed farm where they're getting the food lights. and fresh water and care. Also part of the rescue, the miniature lights. donkeys, as well as llamas and alpacas, goats, rabbits, and more. Today, as we moved them here, they were actually able to run around and roll on the ground and play and scratch each other's backs. And you could see they knew they were in a better place. The animals were rescued this morning by an army of more than 60 volunteers who showed up with trucks and trailers at dozens of malnourished and mistreated animals were rescued today from a traveling petting zoo in Kane County. Just last week, 10 animals were found dead at the facility located on a farm in northwest suburban Hampshire. Today, volunteers came out to help bring the animals to new homes. Fox 32's Craig Wall was there. <laughs> The rescued animals include horses and miniature horses, now enjoying space to romp and play at a new undisclosed farm where they're getting food and fresh water and care. Also part of the rescue, miniature donkeys, as well as llamas and alpacas, goats, rabbits, and more. Today, as we moved them here, they were actually able to run around and roll on the ground and play and scratch each other's backs. And you could see they knew they were in a better place. The animals were rescued this morning by an army of more than 60 volunteers who showed up with trucks and trailers at the Mini Zoo Crew Petting Zoo and Rescue in Hampshire, where the animals have been kept. Well, it's been incredible. I mean, we had 13 plus trucks, I believe, filled, you know, with putting all the animals in. We were moving 80 plus animals. So uh, just come out here today seeing how happy they are and, and that they're, they're just, you can see a difference already. Petting Zoo owner Stacy Fibercorn was arrested last week after more than 10 animals in her care were found dead. 
The other surviving animals were all lacking food and water. Many were sick. Animal Control is now seeking forfeiture on all 85 rescued animals so they can adopt them out, but not just anyone. On my staff, we're doing background checks, we're doing site checks, we do reference checks, um, everything we can do to make sure they're going to a good farm and, and be loved by the, by the new family. Volunteers also helped build lean-tos to give the outside animals some shelter from tonight's pending storm. They were all celebrating a good day for animal lovers. And we came together and we were able to save these, these little guys. And, and now they don't have to worry about this ever again. And they're not going to be in this position, hopefully, ever again in their life. The next step for these animals is for the Kane County Animal Control Office to finalize the forfeiture procedure, giving them legal ownership of the animals. That could happen in a day or so. They are already accepting applications for adoption for the right home. For more information, as well as a link to the Kane County Animal Control Facebook page, check out our website, myfoxchicago.com. Jeff, Don? All right. Craig, thanks. Well, two really quick things just to bring you up to speed. The animals were forfeited. They are now in our care. All but maybe... Seven, I think, are adopted or going to good homes. Uh, we're working on the last seven, and um, we're moving forward with this new community that we have around us uh, and providing care for all the animals in Kane County as best we can. Uh, as you saw, those lean tos built were built by maintenance. The county, like I said, embraced this project and they put their arms around us and helped us. We do have certificates for all the volunteers. What I'll do is I'll give them to you out there, signed by the chairman and the county board here. So we thank you all. Yes, sir, Doug. Excuse me, I'm just wondering if we have the time to have, pass that microphone around so that each person could introduce themselves and their town and if they're a staff member, what their position is. And <coughs> I think that's awesome, Doug. Hi, everybody. My name is Leslie Sanfilippo. I'm a co-founder of Start a Sanctuary, and we're going to move forward with Robert, and we're going to get a rescue response team going. So when the next disaster happens, that will be taken care of. So. My name is Rosalind Wild. I actually represent Maple Lane Farm in Kendall County, just outside of Kane County. And Sandra Gokin Miles, I think she knows some of the members of the board here, is actually my employer. And I couldn't have helped with the rescue without her approval. And we adopted both the llamas. They have a home for life. <laughs> My name is Amanda Holleraller, and I've owned a horse for over 10 years, and this story was very moving for me. Um, <laughs> this is my friend Ashley, and she's been riding with me, and hopefully we can actually get a horse soon for her. My name is Shannon Mulvaney, and I am the shelter manager at King County Animal Control, um, and it's just been wonderful working with all of you. Um, and all of your help, we honestly couldn't have done it without any of you. So thank you. Carol Veritoni, and I'm an animal control warden. And yes, we couldn't have done it without all of you. You are all a big inspiration. You did a great job. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm Janet Hoffman. I'm a warden at uh, King County Animal Control. and. This Similar to Carol, we couldn't have done it without you. It's it's just overwhelming. And in the process, we've made a lot of friends too. So thank you. I'm Denise Clock. Um, my husband and I have been on residents of Kane County now for about 11 years. And of all the counties we've ever lived in, we feel so indebted to Kane County, to Rob, to pulling all this together so very quickly. Um, makes us very proud to be residents here, and uh, we appreciate the county support in our open spaces and, and the belief in us as horsemen, and it was an absolute pleasure to be able to give back for once. <laughs> Mike Delighton from St. Charles. Um, I'm a longtime member of the uh, Field of Dreams Horse Rescue located in rural Batavia, and uh, this is another member of the group, uh, Kim. Hi, I'm Kim Baltig, I'm a board director and volunteer coordinator for Field of Dreams Horse Rescue and Adoption. I put out the call late in the evening, got several volunteers together, and I would love to be able to partner with several of the organizations to educate the public and the community that these types of things are going on right in your backyard 
they need to be addressed pronto, promptly, and immediately. And I hope that we can get that going. So I will pass it along to. I'm Connie Sauceda. I'm Rob's mom. <laughs> My name is Judy Farber. I live in Carroll Stream, and um, when it comes to rescuing animals, I will cross county lines out of DuPage. <laughs> um, I, um, I help out at uh, Field of Dreams, and I, do, uh, I did rescue a horse there, and own a horse there, and I also help out at Fox Valley Wildlife. My name is Sarah Yakel. Um, this is my son, Cooper. Cooper, can you tell them what you do? I help at our barn. What do, what, do what do you do? I help our animals. Do you know he's my he's my helper. Um, I had the majority of the animals on my property, and it's just been I've shed tears and smiles and heartaches, and I would do this all over again. Um, watching them run and play and scratch each other's backs and roll and be able to enjoy life again. Um, like Robert said. My team, Dr. Nikki, she's my go-to person. She's my vet. I put a call to her, and she jumped right on board, and her vet tech, Aaron. Aaron's husband is our horseshoer who's been shoeing all these horses, taking care of all the horses and the minis and the donkeys for us, um, again, doing this for the kindness of the animals, and I wouldn't be able to do it without them. Um, Nikki's been on my property pretty much every other day since this whole thing started. Um, we are waiting. I'm waiting any day now for one of the minis to fall, so we're super excited to watch the baby come. Mom's doing really good. We were kind of touch and go, not sure if she was going to have enough milk, and she's, uh, she's doing good. So I would do this all over again and thankful that I have enough land and enough you know, help to uh, be able to do this. So I'm glad I jumped aboard and went ahead. And thanks to my little buddy who's out there every morning before school helping me clean stalls and brush the minis and helping me turn them out and just playing with them and giving them love that they needed. Right, Coop? Thank you. Uh, my name is Michelle Munn, and I'm a, a longtime, very proud resident of Kane County. Um, it was just amazing to be part of this experience. I was very thankful to have the opportunity. Um, I've had the pleasure of working with Carol from Animal Control in the past, where we rescued uh, an emaciated mother and, and its baby a few years ago. So um, I hope I can continue, you know, helping out Animal Control in whatever way I can. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kim Angerman from Tuckaway Farm, and I also got to um, house a couple of the minis. Um, it has been quite the experience. Um, I have met an amazing amount of people. Um, knowing how King County Animal Control works now, I never had an idea of, of how much they jumped. Um, but I guess I would agree with Sarah and Michelle and everybody else here. If it ever comes through again, you can count on me. I'm there. So thank you very much for letting me participate in this, and I, I do it again. Uh, my name is Susan Parker. I live in St. Charles and um, own a couple horses of my own. I saw the posting on Facebook from somebody that morning, and I just canceled my appointments for the day and grabbed my truck and my trailer and showed up to help and be happy to do it again anytime. My name is Susan Brown. I'm the exotic animal veterinarian that took care of everything that wasn't a horse. <laughs> I don't do horses. I don't no. do anything else. Yeah, she doesn't do anything else. Yeah. So we had rabbits, um, goats, llamas, alpacas, turkeys, ducks, and chickens. So I, ha I was at three different locations um, taking care of, of the animals and testifying at the hearing. Um, I've been involved in at least four other very large rescues in other parts of the country where I've had to testify and care for animals, et cetera. And this was quite unique in that I've never seen such an outpouring of just local people, that it wasn't just 
these sort of government people, animal control, and this and that. Local people came forward. It was just incredible and phenomenal. I met so many wonderful people. I had a lot of help, you know, putting smelly stuff on goats for lice and, you know, trimming hooves. Uh, actually, Robert here became quite an expert at trimming goat hooves. In fact, he wouldn't give the clippers back to me. He just kept saying, I want to do the next one. I want to do the next one. It's hilarious. So anyway, it's been quite an honor, um, and uh, it's exciting to see all these animals now go to wonderful homes. And I ended up with that little cutie, baby Kriya, that little alpaca and the mom. <laughs> and he's very smart. He's already learning how to distinguish shapes. I train animals too, so he's, he's amazing. Hi, I'm Cindy Cable from Barrington Hills and uh, Patriot's Farm. And as, again, just as you did, as soon as I heard about it, I dropped everything and ran. People are great. Hello, I'm Brianna Leland. I'm an animal control warden for Kane County. Um, I just want to thank everyone for all the support, and I'm really excited for all the bridges that we've made through the community. Um, I'm Nikki Wessel. I'm the equine vet. Um, I own Cutting Edge Equine. I'm not in Kane County, but that doesn't mean I won't help, obviously. <laughs> um, but honestly, Sarah got involved with this and called, and I'm like, all right, let's see what we can do. We met them um, when we pulled them off the property, and I haven't left. Um, so we've got 30 horses now at Sarah's that we've got all but like four have homes already. I'm so excited. Um, so we're all moving forward. We saved almost all of them, which was good. You know, we did what we could. But again, when we showed up that day to pick them all up, the amount of people, the horse community is a really close-knit community. So this was a huge win for all of us, which was good. To, we won't stand for this. So thank you very much for everything. I'm Erin Nielsen. I'm Dr. Nikki's uh, technician. So when she said yes, of course I said yes too, and was glad to volunteer my time and be down there with all these animals and uh, help them as much as I could. I was glad to be able to uh, step up and help a little bit. And uh, it's been an emotional experience, but one that I'm grateful to be, have been a part of and would do it again in a heartbeat. We've saved a lot of animals, and I'm very grateful for that. And she's got a donkey coming home, too. And a, and a bunny. Well, as you can see, this is a fine representation of the volunteers. Chairman, would you like to have the last word? <laughs> I, I, I'm going to defer my portion of the program, but thank you very much, uh, Barb. I appreciate it. Uh, everybody who turned out, uh, the credit uh, that you bring to yourself, to the communities that you represent, as you say, the bridges that have been built, built through this process, thank you so much for coming forward. You provide such a good example of conduct and behavior and compassion for the rest of us to follow. So thank you. pretty bitter circumstances, am I correct? Yes. Yeah. 
know, this kind of example of volunteerism uh, is worth waiting a few moments for. Okay, next on the agenda, uh, I'm going to relinquish my time to it to next month, have a couple of uh, good stories for you. Uh, we'll put that on next month's agenda. Um, do we have any speakers on agenda items other than the petitions for zoning? I don't think that we have anybody who has signed up. Um, but just one last call. All right. <clears throat> then we'll go into the zoning petitions. We have two zoning petitions to present. I'd like to ask Ms. Barrero, our Development Committee Chairman, uh, if she would care to make a motion for uh, petition number 4305. Uh, and if there's a second. So Ms. Barrero, would you like to make that motion? The motion, I believe there is speakers. There are, and I'm gonna go through those once we have a motion okay. and a second. Yes, I would make, love to make the motion. Okay, so motion, motion's made by uh, uh, committee Chairman Burrow, is there a second? So moved by Ms. Lesh. Um, now, for discussion, uh, if I'm not mistaken, we have several people who uh, would like to speak on this. Um, I think, uh, why don't we ask uh, opponents uh, to speak first, and then, um, you know, the, the um, custom is that we, we have about three minutes uh, for uh, each presentation, I'll ask as you come forward if uh, that's a, an adequate amount of time. Uh, we'll have a lot of uh, pieces that we go through today, but we want to hear from everybody who'd like to speak. Mr. Chairman, don't we usually read this? Yes. We read yeah. the petition, yeah. so it's part of the... Yes. We, we usually read it so it's part of the record. Yes. The, the first the petition, 4305. Okay, we'll have She's going to. Okay, this is the petition, let's see, we're just, sorry, the beginning of this. The petitioner is Entra Soccer LLC. This is in Dundee Township. The location is the north side of Mason Road, 200 feet east of Tyrell Road, Section 30, Dundee Township. Uh, the proposed is rezoning from B2 District 2 I mean, I'm sorry, B2 District Business to PUD Plan Unit Development. Uh, on the 2040 plan, it's office research. Um, the objectors are neighbors, uh, neighboring property owners. Uh, recommendation was staff approved it. Uh, the Regional Planning Commission was not applicable. Zoning Board recommendation approved and Development Committee approved. Okay. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Burrell. Okay, um, Mr. Pace, if I'm not mistaken, uh, you'd like to speak. Would you come forward? And I believe that you're in opposition. Oh. Okay, who's going to speak first? If you'd uh, let us know your name and uh, your address, that'd be great. And does three minutes fit oh, definitely. into... All right. And would you move the microphone closer to so that we can hear what you say? How's that? Thank you. Okay. Hi, I am Rose Zirk, and along with my husband, Robert, we live at 720 Cary Court in Gilberts. We have lived on this very nice and quiet cul-de-sac for 25 years. I am here to ask for your support to vote no on the intra soccer rezone for a liquor license. We have seen several businesses come and go at the 39 West 950 Mason Road in Elgin, which now occupies the intra soccer. Some of the occupants have been quite challenging for us on Cary Court, like the Teen Club Center, while others like the volleyball courts and the hockey rink, they were just fine. We don't have a problem with the soccer field, but what we do not want is, a, is for the facility to obtain a liquor license. They want to expand the business there to include a banquet hall, a bar and grill, and an outdoor beer garden. It would increase the noise level in the evenings and weekends. There would be additional flow of traffic at all hours, which we already have a problem of getting in and out of our streets onto Tyrrell Road. Not to mention the litter along the roadside that us homeowners pick up regularly, all of which we feel will have a negative impact on our property value. I am asking you to please vote no for the rezoning 
change at the inner soccer at the intra soccer. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Sirk. Uh, Mr. Pace, would you like to go now? Okay. Uh, then I think that this is maybe Mr. Freeman. Okay. So, Mr. Corey Freeman, if you'd introduce yourself and your address, and then uh, just three minutes. Yeah. Fit? Okay. I'm Corey Freeman. I live at 14 N 555 Tyrell Road and have since 1992. Uh, we own seven acres of woods right by the corner at Big Timber and Tyrell Road, which uh, has now, with all the improvements of Tyrell, become Route 66. As far as speeding is concerned, we don't need more traffic on Tyrell Road. We have enough speeders as it is. Uh, one of the problems is the consequences of your zoning changes. You zone the property next to mine for uh, office research a number of years ago, and so far nothing's been built on it except you made him improve his drainage and his flood control, which was very nice. It raised his property, and now all his water floods mine. I've now lost two acres of woods and two acres of uh, field because of the water problem. I don't think killing trees was what you had in mind as one of the consequences of that zoning change. Now we have someone looking for an office in research. If you go out there, you'll see an awful lot of office and research buildings. This is a soccer club. And what he wants to do is put in a bar, a grill, a beer garden, a restaurant, and a banquet hall. Somehow that doesn't seem like research and development. It seems like a bar, a grill, a banquet hall, and a beer garden. That's what it sounds like to me, folks. And I'm also the banquet trustee at the Eagles Club right down the road, which is a nonprofit social organization that does a lot of good in the town of Gilberts. What we need is a banquet hall right next to us, bringing in a lot of business and taking it away from us so we won't make the money in order to keep the doors open. This guy already has, if you've ever been out there on a Saturday or Sunday, one heck of a business going. He doesn't need to turn office and research into a restaurant beer establishment. Think of the consequences, not what it looks in the pretty paper, what at the end result is. Zoning, research and development result two acres of flooding and two acres of dead trees. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Freeman. Now, Mr. Pace? And it's three minutes? Three minutes, three minutes, three minutes ten seconds, maybe right around there. Okay, so three minutes. Uh, my name is Dan Pace. I'm a resident of Gilberts. I speak on behalf of my neighbors and everyone in our coalition, known as, known as RASWA, or Residents Against Soccer with Alcohol. We ask you to acknowledge our concerns by discontinuing any further action towards obtaining a liquor license for the property in question. We didn't move out west some 25 years ago, purchase a chunk of land, and build our homes with even the slightest of fear that a beer garden might someday be opening within approximately 200 feet of our back patio. Why? Because our forefathers never intended it to be that way when they plotted the land originally with a comprehensive plan and zoned it accordingly. During the course of our dis discussions, one board member stated that his main interest in this project was to maintain a good tenant in the building and find agreement with the neighboring residences. We have no issues with inner soccer as tenants and even applaud their success is backed by the full parking lots. I mean, they're quite successful. The proof is in these pictures. The matter of petitions 4305 moved forward unnoticed for over a year until adjoining residents were notified by mail of the February 2014 Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. Local opposition has mounted ever since. I offer four pages of signatures of evidence. Table this matter in another 30 days and with some good weather, and we could present hundreds more. Only a small number of these are actual boundary neighbors to the property. Most are Gilbert's residents who feel, among other things, our police presence and efficiency would be compromised by acting as first responders in county matters, especially with the additional threat of the serving of alcohol brings. Amongst these signatures, by the way, are members of the Village of Gilbert's Board of Trustees. Any catering to the petitioner in his attempt to attain a liquor license to service a bar 
restaurant, beer garden, and banquet hall under the guise of a soccer club raises grave concerns. We feel a zoning change would essentially be turning your backs on your constituency. I expressed this feeling to the same board member and stated that a lack of representation would not be forgotten in November. I was shocked when he said he didn't appreciate such threats. If that's a threat, would a vote cast in his favor then be considered a bribe? We think not, and consider our right to vote a moral obligation and duty to our neighbors and families. As elected officials, you often catch flack for making decisions disregarding the, wish, the wishes of those you represent. Attitude and lack of empathy on behalf of your constituency mostly prompts these accusations unnecessarily. Such is not the case here. The people have spoken. We trust we will be heard and justice served. Unless the petitioner from Chicago has a longer list of county residents who support this zoning change, due diligence says this vote can only go one way. I'd like to thank you on behalf of all those I represent for your service to the community and this chance to speak. May God bless. Thank you very much, Mr. Pace. Okay, uh, next on the list of speakers, uh, either and or uh, Peter Bezos or Andy Skolnick. Would you like to come forward? So uh, will you be speaking uh, individually or as one? Uh, well, he'll follow me right okay, away. Is that all right? So is the three minutes about right? Plenty. Okay. Plenty. Thank you, Peter. Board members, Peter Bezos, attorney for uh, IntraSoccer. Um, we hadn't planned to speak, but we, uh, we understand there's a little bit of uh, misinformation being disseminated about uh, all of the uses that uh, Mr. Skolnick's act, uh, organization now can do are all permitted uses under B2. We're not here for any sporting use permission. Uh, we're only here to get a PUD so that we can sell, um, uh, serve alcohol, and he'll speak to that. Um, but, uh, and the staff had recommended a PUD rather than seeking rezoning to B4, which would have allowed much more heavy usage, and we don't seek heavy usage or adult usage. Um, initially, Gilberts and Elgin both filed formal, formal municipal objections. We proceeded to meet with both of those communities. Um, as part of our discussions, we eliminated many of the activities that we had sought uh, to include in the PUD, such as outdoor music events and outdoor um, paintball events and carnivals. All of that is out. So the um, email that some of you may have received about noisy outside activities has been stricken many, many weeks ago and before the last CBA meeting. Um, we appreciate that both communities withdrew their support. We appreciate staff support, ZBA approval, and we hope uh, this board will recommend approval, or will, will give us your approval. Mr. Skolnick. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bezos. Mr. Skolnick. Good morning, my name is Andy Skolnick. I'm the developer or the um, master leasee of the property. We, um, we currently have a master lease to operate the facility until we decide to exercise our option uh, to buy the property. Um, honestly, I'm a little bit puzzled as how some of the petitions that we made or some of the things we want to do there got a little bit out of hand. Um, I have not met the uh, first two speakers. Um, uh, I have met Mr. Pace several times, invited him to the facility. Uh, so uh, I think that we've um, really exhausted all our attempts to discuss with him what we really want to do. So I'd like to address the first two people who seem to be fearful that we're going to have a big free-for-all, basically. Uh, the image being of uh, people going in there and, and uh, exceeding their use of alcohol. We have no intention of running a banquet hall, I repeat. No intention of, reading, of running a banquet hall. I happen to have a banquet hall in Chicago, and you, I can't run fast enough away from that business. <laughs> um, we, uh, the premise under which we have submitted this application is because when people play sports, at the end of playing sports, most people enjoy a beer for the same reason that families go to the Bears or the Cubs game and drink a beer. 
Um, we have, uh, we, we understand liquor license. We happen to have one. We've never had, in other liquor licenses, ever had a problem. Uh, we understand that if we abuse that privilege, that uh, will come back to bite us. Um, there is no demand in that neck of the woods for us to establish the kind of facility that scares our neighbors. There is no demand. If, if, even if we tried, even if we invested, uh, if the Elks, I believe that's the name, has a banquet hall nearby and they're not rolling in money, there is no demand. Basically, we wouldn't put something next to them that would compete with them. It doesn't make any sense. So, um, I could go on for a while, but um, I wonder if you have any questions for me that you'd like to ask. Well, Mr. Skolnick, I think we're going to have a, a bit of discussion here. Uh, you're at about 2.30. Was there anything else that you wanted to add? No, I uh, think I'm good. Okay. Thank well, you. thank you, Mr. Skolnick. Uh, and thank you to all the speakers who came forward. Okay, now, if, if I'm not mistaken, uh, this, uh, this petition is in um, Mr. Kozarek's uh, district. So, uh, Kurt, would you like to um, lead out in the discussion first? Well, I think Mr. Skolnick's already answered several of the um, statements that I wanted to make. This is not a banquet facility. It is not a tavern. It is not an outdoor concert venue. Um, I, I've tried to explain that to anyone that has asked me a question about it or expressed any possible concerns. Um, this is not going to change any landscaping drainage issues on the neighboring um, parcels, so it won't be affecting them. In reverse, I, I would actually point out that everything else in that area is zoned as a business industrial type complex. So when you talk about the other adjoining parcels, if this parcel was to fail for any reason, if Mr. Skolnick opted out, you're talking about possibly, um, the, mo the more likely probability would be the facility's next owner would be an industrial park. You're talking about the introduction of semis, which would add a different type of traffic than what other people have been concerned about. Um, you're talking about then having drainage issues because things would have to be scaled differently to be able to accommodate. Um, I think, moreover, Mr. Skolnick hasn't mentioned, but to the question about uh, the concern for the municipality and the public safety, Mr. Skolnick has offered to put his money essentially where his mouth is and reimburse the village for any type of costs that were um, incurred by the village to respond to any type of alcohol-related activity. In the three years, I believe, that Mr. Skolnick has been the managing partner over there, there hasn't been any type of police action necessary. He's shown that he's a very good tenant, that he is doing a good job, that he is policing his own patrons. Um, I've toured the facility. I will personally be signing my son up to play in the kickstarting program in soccer, and I don't even like soccer. <laughs> uh, Shame on you. <laughs> But I believe, it's, I believe he is a good tenant and a good asset to the community as a whole. Um, I do not want to see this development go under and become another blighted building like we have on a different portion of my district that we've talked about earlier on in my term. Um, with that, I'd be willing to answer any questions. I've been working on this for over a year with Mr. Skolnick, and I found that he has been very reasonable in giving concessions to uh, the municipality and everyone else that has had concerns. Okay. Um, uh, Please forgive me for asking the personal question, but I think it is relevant in this case. Uh, you and your family are residents of Gilbert's? Is we are right? residents of Gilbert's. We've never received any contributions from Mr. Gilbert's nor Mr. Bezos. I have no economic or personal stake in this property whatsoever. No, but the residency, I Correct. think, is I live, in, I live in Timber Trails down the street from it. I pass the facility every day. Okay. And please forgive me, or thank you for your indulgence. Um, uh, other comments or questions from the uh, members of the board? Dr. Silva? Good morning. Um, this is a difficult vote because we have so many residents um, from the area and I always tend to move in the direction of what the residents want. Um, however, there seems to be some confusion because some allegations have been made and then they've been disputed. So I guess I would take a look at a, um, a couple of things um, that are important because we never really want to stand in the way of development, but we also want to make sure these people stay in the homes that they paid for um, a few years back. Um, as far as the issue of transportation, ha do I understand that there is no expected increase in, in um, the amount of cars because it's, the venue is already there. All you're asking for is a license to, as the case was pointed, 
as, as it was pointed out, to, for people to have to drink a beer after the game. Is that? Uh, should I, do, you want, do you want to be answering those questions or should Mr. Bezos? Unless you want to direct it directly to the developer. That's fine. Um, the question, I mean, the, the company itself is, is working well right now. They do have uh, quite a few patrons. Um, whether or not those patrons are able to have a beer, I don't believe that is going to be increasing the traffic. I don't believe it's going to be encouraging more. This venue is for soccer first and primarily. It is not a tavern. It is not a place that people will go specifically to just have a beer. Um, I, I think the idea is to go to watch your child play or to play in an adult league yourself. Much, much like the facilities that are, are already in King County. So the, again, the three things that I'm looking at are transportation development, um, we never want to stand in the way of development, but also public health. Um, you, can, can you please elaborate on the um, conversations? Has there been a signed agreement? I know um, you mentioned something about there will be liability, uh, or, or the proposed owner has um, taken on liability. Please, I don't want to speak for you. Is there? Mr. Skolnick has sent a signed agreement to the village of Gilbert stating that he will reimburse the village for any type of police action that is necessitated by drinking at the property. Um, to this point in the years that he has been the manager, there has been no police action nor or any type of cause for it. Okay, thank you. So um, it seems like the safety, there is adequate, um, there is adequate security or safety. Um, the, the Police department does not have any. Um, has you have heard of no objections to this from from these police or the village of Gilberts had objected originally, and it's very important to understand the village of Gilberts um, because of their local proximity to the so to the facility itself would be the first responder. It's easier for them to get to the facility rather than the sheriff coming out from Geneva. Um, that being said, the village was initially opposed to this. Through concessions that were offered by Mr. Uh, Mr. Skolnick, the petitioner, the village had withdrawn its um, its opposition. And I think Mr. Um, Bezos had actually stated that there's still both of them, but Elgin and Gilbert have both withdrawn their objections to the facility. Okay, thank you. And then um, my final question would be, um, sir, have you increased your, or do you plan on increasing your insurance liability limits? Has there been any change in that since you will be um, offering alcohol? Have you? Has there been thought to that? By law, you have to uh, you. get specific insurance for that use, yes. So there was an increase in insurance? Yeah, I can't give you the exact amount no, of the coverage, but uh -huh. I do know that we applied for insurance. As part of the liquor application, okay. you need to show proof of insurance. Okay, thank and you for enlightening an, me. That is in addition to what we already have. I appreciate that. Thank you. Those are my questions. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Silva. Uh, Mr. Smith and Mr. Vasquez. We certainly want to live through the summer, and the way to do it is to use the fields outside for activities such as soccer. Um, we, we, we plan to develop those grass areas as full 11 against 11, or even smaller fields, 7 against 7. And that's just for soccer? No, there is, no, there is a developer that wants to do flag football. It's mainly for kids. Um, there's, a, there's a series of act outdoor soccer related, excuse me, athletic related, sports related activities planned. No carnivals or anything like that? No, sir. And that's, I think that's excluded from what we applied. I think that's excluded from what we applied. Okay, Mr. Smith. To just, just to add as, to that as well, the outdoor beer garden that's been discussed at great length is a couple of tables that are surrounded by a privacy fence. Um, the, you have to actually step down into that facility, and the privacy fence is rather high. It would be about eight feet above the person's head. Um, it's not something that's readily available or has a lot of access from the outside. It's pretty sheltered in. If people sitting at a table talking would bother anyone, then yes, they would be. Um, you're not talking about any loud music or outdoor venues. There's no bandstand or anything else um, that would be in that facility. Unless Mr. Skolnick wanted to add anything to that. Just that there's a good 100 yards or more between the area just described and the closest neighbor. With a tree fence, or with a tree line and a privacy fence in between. Okay. 
All right, Mr. Vasquez. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> just a point of clarity and stuff. Uh, when you issue a liquor license, it's not just about after the game having a beer. I mean, he has access to from 10 o'clock till 1 o'clock, whatever our law says. So it's not just for <laughs> after a game having a beer. So we're clear on that. <clears throat> My other question is uh, with regards to the gentleman who is a property owner adjacent to this with the water problems. What have we done to uh, address those issues? That's a different parcel that is across uh, Mason Road. It's actually adjacent to, it has a driving range. Then there's the, the parcel that the gentleman was speaking to, and then there's his property. So that parcel has absolutely nothing to do with the parcel in question. Um, I think any type of drainage issues is definitely something that I would like to um, investigate to find out how it could be mitigated. Thank you. But that would be a separate discussion from today. Okay, any other thoughts, comments? If not, we have a motion and a second. Uh, would the clerk please call the roll? Alan. Aye. Aubrey. Yes. Barrio. Yes. Castro. Yes. Donahue. Yes. Ford. Yes. Franz. Yes. Gillum. Yes. Heyman. Yes. Hoshe. Yes. Kenyon. Yes. Kazarik. Yes. Ivan. <coughs> Lewis. Yes. Molina. Yes. Alec. Yes. Sheffro. Yes. Silva? Yes. Smith? Yes. Sterry? Yes. Vasquez? Yes. Winicki? Yes. 22. Okay, uh, the motion passes. Our next item is petition 4313. Would uh, development chairman uh, Barrero care to make a motion to approve mm -hmm. petition 4313? Yes, I'd like to make a motion to okay. approve 4313. <laughs> So moved by uh, sure. Ms. Burrow. I need to, yeah, I need to read it, sir. Okay, if you'd read your motion and then we have a second in Ms. Sterrett. Uh, this is petition 4313, it's in Batavia Township. Uh, the petitioner is Pinnacle Towers, LLC, and the location is on property located just north and east of the property located at 2S 129 Hart Road, Section 26 in Batavia Township. Uh, is proposed special use for a private communications tower. Um, it is on 1.74 acres, and in the 2040 plan, it is um, urban neighborhoods slash mixed use infill. There are no objectors and the staff approves it. Regional Planning Commission was not applicable. The zoning, zoning board uh, recommended approval with the following stipulation, that the first 100 feet of the access drive to this parcel be paved by the petitioner and the, the development committee um, approved it with the above mentioned stipulation. Okay, thank you, thank you Ms. Uh, Burrell. Uh, and Ms. Sterrett, you're a second. If I'm not mistaken, this is in your district. Okay. Are there any uh, questions or comments? If not, I'd like to ask the clerk to call the roll. Allen. Aye. Auger. Yes. Ferrer. Yes. Castro. Yes. Donahue. Yes. Ford. Yes. Fries. Yes. Gillum. Yes. Heyman. Yes. Hoshe. Yes. Kenyon. Yes. Kazaik. Yes. Lash. Yes. Lewis. Yes. Molina. Yes. Pollock. Yes. Sheffro. Yes. Silva? Yes. Smith? Yes. Sterrett? Yes. Vasquez? Yes. Winnicki? Yes. Okay, the motion passes. Uh, next on the agenda, resolutions and ordinances. Um, would anyone like to remove an item from the consent agenda? Uh, Mr. Sheffield? Uh, 14102 and 14103. I'm sorry, could you speak up? 14102 and 14103. Collective bargaining. Oh, so 14102? Yes. Okay. And? 14103. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Any others? Okay. If not, um, we, let's see. I'd like to ask for, excuse me, a motion to move the consent agenda. So moved by uh, Mr. Hoshite, second by Ms. Sterrett. Uh, any discussion, questions? If not, I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. Oh, excuse me, on, on that's the consent agenda. We'll come back to the other two items. So, excuse me, Jane. Ellen? Aye. 
Auger? Yes. Ferrario? Yes. Castro? Yes. Donahue? Yes. Ford? Yes. Foz? Yes. Gillum? Yes. Heyman? Yes. O'Shea? Yes. Kenyon? Yes. Kazari? Yes. Lash? Yes. Lewis? Yes. Molina? Yes. Pollock? Yes. Sheffalo? Yes. Silva? Yes. Smith? Yes. Sterrick? Yes. Vasquez? Yes. Winnick? Yes. Okay, the motion passes. Now, um, going to uh, number 14102. Um, oh, excuse me. Mr. Hoshay? Understanding Mr. Sheplow's reason to discuss these, I'll move 14102 and 14103 together. Okay, so moved by uh, Mr. Hoshay, second by Ms. Sterrett. Uh, conversation questions. Uh, Mr. Sheplow. Uh, I voted against these on, uh, at the uh, Finance Committee. Uh, I want to also vote no today. Um, I think our staff did a great job uh, negotiating these contracts. I'm not, uh, there's no negative reflection on our attorneys. Uh, uh, I think the unions also gave concessions. I think they probably would have preferred um, uh, you know, uh, differences in the health insurance, for example, and probably s uh, some of the members weren't satisfied with the level of the pay increases. But uh, I, I intend to vote no because of uh, the taxpayers in my district. Um, I think we're still in a situation where uh, private employers aren't giving annual increases. So this is 9% over four years. Uh, I think most people are still you know, in a stagnant, stagnant wage um, position in the private economy, and that's the purpose of my no vote. Thank you, Mr. Sheffield. Any other comments, questions? <laughs> If not, I'd like to ask the clerk to call the roll. Allen? Aye. Harder? No. Radio? Yes. Castro? Yes. Donahue? Yes. Ford? Excuse me. Oh, she had left her. Fraz? Yes. Gillum? <coughs> Heyman? Yes. Poche? Yes. Kenyon? Yes. Krasarek? Yes. Flash? No. Lewis? Yes. Molina? Pollock? Yes. Sheffield? No. Silva? Yes. Here. Oh, Smith. I'm sorry, Mr. Smith. <laughs> I'm still thinking. Go to Sterrett. Sterrett? Yes. Smith? Yes. <laughs> Vasquez? Yes. Wolicki? Yes. Okay. The motion, the, the motion passes. Okay, next on the agenda uh, may I have, uh, is uh, number 1466. May I have a motion and a second to approve? Um, oh, uh, yes, uh, resolution 14-66. So moved by Mr. Hoshait, second by uh, Mr. Heyman. Uh, this is amending um, Appendix C of the King County Liquor Code liquor licenses. Uh, was held over from the March uh, County Board meeting. Uh, this is for the interest soccer um, uh, resolution that was, or petition that was passed earlier. So, uh, moved and seconded. Any uh, questions, comments? If not, I'd like to ask the clerk to call the roll. Allen? Aye. Auger? Yes. Mario? Yes. Castro? Yes. Donahue? Yes. Ford? Yes. Fries? Yes. Gillum? Yes. Heyman? Yes. O'Shea? Yes. Kenyon? Yes. Kazarik? Yes. Lash? Yes. Lewis? Yes. Molina? Yes. Pollock? <clears throat> Sheffalo? Yes. Silva? Yes. Smith? Yes. Sterrett? Yes. Vasquez? Yes. Winnicki? Yes. Okay, the motion passes. Okay, next item on the agenda is the uh, uh, executive compensation. Uh, there are nine items. I'd like to ask for a resolution to move these nine together and then we'll have the discussion. So moved by Mr. Foss, second by Ms. Sterrett. Um, uh, as far as uh, the discussion, uh, I'll start out and then I'm going to ask, I, I realize that there are some folks who have um, uh, already decided that they're going to vote no and uh, many people who are going to vote yes. Um, we are following the ordinance that has been uh, put in place in November, December, uh, scrupulous, uh, scrupulously, uh, explicitly. 
Uh, we do have some catching up to do. Uh, uh, there was a 2% increase across the board for all of our employees except for uh, one person who I um, overlooked unintentionally last year in the entire county. Um, that was 2% last year, and then the four years before that time, there were no raises um, uh, for those um, managers. Uh, approximately, and then uh, this year is a sixth year under consideration. So basically, uh, the two from last year, 5% this year over a six year period of time, is slightly over a 1% increase uh, per year for that period of, uh, of time. Um, there was a, an analysis that was uh, distributed by Joe Ansik, our financial officer, uh, that demonstrated that we've actually shrunk the cost of our management compensation by approximately $30,000. There was the gross amount of the increase in salaries, IMRF or the pension obligation, and then Social Security, the gross amount of that increase was about $59,000. Uh, the savings from new directors at KingCom, Public Health, and Finance being hired at lower rates, and this was part of the uh, analysis that was sent out in detail to all the board members, that was about $40,600 of savings. And then the savings from reorganizing uh, the development facilities environmental manager, manager, uh, management was approximately $50,000, so the net of these three pieces combined is approximately $31,000 of less money spent. So the cost of managing uh, Kane County uh, at that uh, level of um, management has actually shrunk by about $31,000. Uh, in a way, this is uh, similar to what we did with the Assistant State's Attorney, uh, where across a period of time we caught up to comparable compensation uh, so that we protect the talent that is hired into the county and then uh, trained. And uh, I think that our standard, well, first I, um, the standard is that we require superior performance. I believe that it's fair to then offer at least average pay. I believe that uh, many of us on this board use the standard of what would we do individually if this were our own money? Because in a small part, it is our money that we're entrusted to spend for other people, but our standard is as frugal as um, we spend um, our own money. And then I think that uh, I've, I've been encouraged, I know that our management staff has been encouraged <coughs> to hear compliments from board members that say, uh, that call the quality of the work that we receive from these employees great, spectacular, best, exceptional, and then uh, I think that that would then merit, uh, after performance reviews that were conducted in December, a 1% raise per year, uh, uh, or a, a slightly more than 1% per year over the previous six years. So with that, uh, I would like to uh, go into the discussion and ask uh, those, and I think that we'll start with the folks who would, um, I believe, intend to vote no, uh, and, and if it be okay, I know that we could engage in quite a, you know, uh, we want to discuss it, we certainly don't want to argue it, uh, but if people could uh, give their piece, if they have any questions, we'll do our best to answer them, but let's go one turn per board member rather than, I mean, we've had a lot of discussions on these uh, in Standing Committee, Finance, and Executive Committee. Here, I think it's very important that your voice is heard, um, but um, this is the final moment that um, we need to make decisions. So with that, uh, Mr. Shefflow, did you intend to uh, speak on this? Sure. Um, yeah, I, I am going to vote no on these resolutions uh, as well. Um, it's no reflection on the chairman's work here at the county or these uh, staff members. They're, uh, you know, they all do an excellent job. We haven't, um, you know, there's no, no one suggesting that they aren't doing an excellent job. Um, <clears throat> and I appreciate that the chairman is uh, working with our staff and trying to uh, get their uh, salaries increased. Um, but as we increase salaries, we increase pensions and we increase the cost of running the government, 
as we increase the cost of running the government, we increase sales tax pressure, uh, gas tax perhaps, um, and of course pressure on the real estate tax bill ultimately uh, as well. And so I, on behalf of the taxpayers uh, in my district, uh, I'm voting no uh, to not impose that pressure at this time. Okay, thank you, Mr. Sheffield. Are there other, other people who would like to speak uh, opposed to the um, resolution, the motion? Uh, Ms. Castro? Mr. Chairman, my premise of voting no today is more of a procedural matter. I think when we were doing the budget, I think we should keep this in mind and make it a part of the budget process instead of doing it kind of later in the game. Um, I have nothing against the, uh, kind of as Doug said, nothing against the, the, you know, the administrative staff here at the county, but I think we should keep this all a part of the budget process and, and do our due diligence, and, and, that, and that's why I'll be voting no on this. Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Castro. Other, uh, Ms. Lesh? Thank you. I, I kind of concur and have been thinking about this all along, um, but concurring with the colleagues here, Mr. Shefflow and Ms. Castro, I can't vote for this due to the sense of still being in the downturn of the economy that we are in. Um, I know that our administrators and staff and the directors are, are very deserving of this. I just think the timing is wrong. Um, I think perhaps maybe if we re revisit this next year uh, during the budget budgeting process, that would be helpful as well. Um, so in that aspect, I I'm going to be voting no also. Thank you, Ms. Lesh. Any other thoughts, comments in opposition? And then there are several speakers who would like to speak in favor. Okay. I'm sorry, yes, Ms. Lesh. If there's no other um, opposition, we have um, one from our colleague, Ms. Taylor, that would um, she'd like to make some statements here that she had asked that I read. So I'd like to take that moment, if I may. Um, but it is, it is regarding um, the, w the wages and everything, and she states that over the past few much, months that she has watched uh, the chairman giving different, different presentations at a, moment, at a number of committees and meetings and that it concerns her. Some of the original questions asked of the chairman at his first presentation and to the health committee over two months ago were how many total directors um, are we referring to that to give raises to, that there was no response. And shouldn't this have been discussed and accounted for during the recent budget of the 2014 discussion? Uh, another question was, how many total do dollars in raises are, are we talking about for the um, compensation and increases? And we did not know that at the time. And then also the overall pension obligation long term, um, also something that Mr. Shefflow had also stated about there too. And one of the other concerns is that, you know, we still have the negotiations being open with the union contracts, and a concern there would be if the unions are not um, signed in, in their aspects of, of their negotiations, well, who's to say that they're not going to come back and also ask for a higher percentage in raises as well. So that was coming from our colleague, um, Melissa Taylor. So thank you. Thank you. Is that complete? Okay. Um, for future purposes, I want to make sure that we always uh, have everybody uh, included. Uh, but in the future, uh, you know, with your consensus uh, concurrence, uh, we'll ask members of the board, if they have something to address at a meeting, that they attend that meeting and then uh, deliver what they'd like to say. Uh, if they would like to give a statement, a written statement, uh, they certainly can uh, uh, put that into, you know, all of us can put that in. But in order to speak at this meeting, you need to come to the meeting. Uh, would that be okay? All right. Um, yes, and now we'll go to uh, uh, various people who would like to speak in favor. Uh, Mr. Uh, Donahue? Uh, first of all, I support what uh, the chairman is doing here. I think he spent a lot of time over the last several months um, supporting uh, these raises and I would just say to those people who are concerned about the timing and the impact on the taxpayer um, not five minutes ago with no discussion we allocated 9.7 million dollars of excess revenue from fiscal year 13 to fund uh, anticipated and unanticipated future needs including three million dollars in uh, reserve funds uh, one of which is the property tax freeze protection fund. 
Also over the last couple of months, the chairman has been working on another initiative, which is to establish these funds to maintain our commitment to keeping the property tax levy flat uh, for the foreseeable future. Um, so I think if you take uh, the justification for these raises, particularly the net effect uh, in terms of dollars and cents, which is a nominal five-digit figure granted annually, uh, and the additional pension and IMRF obligations. But if you take that number and compare it to the broader uh, fiscal plan that's been put out here in terms of protecting uh, the property taxpayers, now is a good time to recognize the performance of these non-union management employees who did go four years uh, with zero increase, had a 2% increase uh, last year for a total of 2% over five years. Uh, and I agree that this is a, 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 a consideration that's uh, overdue, and I believe the attendant financial planning and justification has been presented to this board, and so I'm going to vote in favor. Thank you, Mr. Donahue. Others? Uh, Mr. Ford? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I for, long, for the time I've been on this board, have admired uh, the work of, of, of our executives um, with returning phone calls and always being on top and being involved in the meetings, uh, even being uh, personally attacked in, in, in the past. Uh, this weekend was the first time I received calls against this. Um, I kind of wish we were doing this more in a duration, but it is what it is. I really like uh, Commissioner Donahue's uh, approach to it. That really helps out a lot. Uh, I do agree to something that should be done. Um, I, I wish, like I shared with the chairman, that it was a better timing for it when it comes to the union contracts. But I don't know if we can ever really find a better timing when it comes to the union contracts, because we never know when they're going to open and close when they're going to close. So um, I really admire this effort to, to, to try to bring this forward and address it to the full board. Thank you, Mr. Ford. By the way, Mr. Ford, uh, congratulations on the performance that Ryan Boatwright, uh, one of the uh, one of our uh, East Aurora uh, athletes who's made it onto the big stage, his performance last night, and fellow yes. East Aurora. Or actually, is it East Aurora or West Aurora? Oh my gosh, well, congratulations on your run, Ms. Burrell. I will say, I, I will say this, I will say this. That is something you don't do in a law. Right. I, on behalf of the uh, grandfather of yes, Mr. Tom. Moore, right, who I've known since I was in That's my teens. That's that. Right. And uh, he was one that encouraged me to get more involved in how to apply myself to sports and carry myself in between and what the value was after the sport is over with. So. Um, we look forward uh, to maybe doing something maybe next month, uh, which is brought up by one of the commissioners with the uh, Boatwright family. Yes. Or within the next couple of months, hopefully. He did that in your life, and he did that in our sons, uh, all four of our sons' life, also, lives. Uh, Mr. Kenyon. I support the pay raise issue, and since there's 24 of us, only 22 of us here, there's di many different opinions. And I'm with the opinion that the chairman is the best one to see who deserves the raises and how, what. I've written down some examples of why Kane County is number one. It was just two months ago that we won the first recognition of a county in Illinois for a health department. Our health department is second to none, and we've had directors many years. You saw it this morning. We had an issue, the health department stepped forward, they rescued animals, we got statewide recognition, and I know for a fact there's been salmonella milk that's been on the market in Aurora, and they know who did it, it's from somebody in Kane County. Our health department knows who it is. They did that about six years ago. Downstate they recognize us as a superior health department, do we want to lose good directors? I'll just ask you. I mean, it's nice to pat them on the back and say, this is a nice job. But some, sometimes the nice job should be a little bit extra pay. Our development department, second to none, 13 years ago we started farmland development, the first one in the state. 
We have 5,000 acres of ground. We got $13 million of federal money. We were the first one in Illinois to do it. That's no accident. That's no, we've got superior people. Our county assessor is one of the best there is. He works with our treasurer. He works with our clerk. They get the bills out on time. They get the money collected. They get the money out to the people who need it. Is that an accident? I don't think so. Do we want to keep him? Do we want to lose him? I don't think so. And those of us who came to Committee of the Whole heard our own Judge Brown talk about Roger Fronstock. He praised him what a superior job Roger does. His knowledge, his, uh, how he organized the people, he took them through the process of selecting a system. I know we don't want to lose Roger Farnstock. <laughs> and what was the first job that Chris Lawson had to do when he came on board? He had to hire a finance director. Was that agonizing? Do you want to hire another one? I no, don't sir. Think so. <laughs> I can answer that one. No, sir. You know, how, you know how easy it is. You could do that. Do you want to hire another one? Why should we have to keep inventing the wheel? I know it, it sounds good, and I'm, I'm pretty tight with the buck. One of our duties is to provide the best leadership for Kane County we can. And you can't do it like this. You have to have smooth leadership. You hire the best people, you, let, you train them, and you keep them moving. So don't vote for or against anybody. Vote for Kane County. Vote for good leadership vote for good government, and support our people. Beautifully said. <laughs> Dr. Silva? Um, thank you. Is that right? I know I wanted to ring in on this issue because I, I feel strongly about it, and I actually commend your approach because I thought about putting my thoughts together, um, and I think that we are all very well aware, and the points that you've made, Mr. Kenyon, are, are extraordinary. Um, they're really, I almost feel like there's no wrong or right side because I know that whoever's voting no is doing for um, good reasons. However, um, I, I will be voting yes, and um, I believe that there are other ways to save money. Uh, Mr. Donahue, your, your point uh, at last meeting and, and the points that you've made today, um, we approve signage. Um, I, when I, I will share with you my train of thought, and that would be to always put people first, um, then may, maybe money. And I don't know how this can't be taken personally. I don't know how um, they can't feel that after working with many of us at probably 9, 10 o'clock, or whatever, late, late at night, um, and, and giving what they do to our constituency, um, I don't know how it can't be taken personally, but I know that um, these are these are extraordinary uh, directors, and I know that your job performance will continue as it's been in the past, even if this vote doesn't doesn't pass. But um, again, there are other ways to save money. Um, we really do need these personalities who will tell you that their job uh, is made easier by their staff and the people that they work with. Um, however, it does take dedication, compassion, leadership skills, and special personalities to deal with all of us. Um, we all function uniquely differently, and I think um, I've not heard one single complaint. Um, to my recollection on this board, I haven't voted yes to any tax increase or any fee increase, um, but I, I feel strongly about this, and I do, I do feel it should be part of the budget, budget process. However, I don't feel that we should um, uh, that we should penalize our directors for things that we haven't done. So thank you for, those are my thoughts. Thank you very much. Ms. Starrett? Yes. Um, the thoughts that have been actually uh, mentioned today, um, even from Mr. Shufflow um, and from others that maybe have opposed it, um, that I, I enjoy listening to even opinions that maybe I don't agree with. Um, but I think that they all have valid points. Um, but I think that the thing that maybe resonates the most with me 
is the fact that in a business, what I normally do is I, you know, I like to check my boxes. Okay, first of all, you know, and I, I'm very simple about these things. Okay, do we have the money in the budget? And I like to defer to um, our, you know, Chairman Holscheid on finance, and he says, yes, we do have the money in the budget. The next thing I like to think about is, did they do a job well done? Have they done what we need them to do? Are they continually, you know, exceeding our expectations? And from all accounts that I've heard, that they are. Um, and in that respect, then I also then defer to say. Um, Mr. Donahue here, who mentioned the fact that they had not had an increase in their salaries in a long time. And yes, um, I take Jennifer um, Lush's point um, to heart of the fact that it was a bad economy. We have had that. But right now, we do have the money to be able to say thank you to the people. And what Mr. Kenyon said as well, too, the fact that, you know, it's great to say good job. However, it's also great to put your money where your mouth is, too. So I will thank be voting you. yes. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Smith. This is actually very hard for us to be in the We deal with these people on a daily basis. We see their expertise and what they bring to the table. Uh, but then the other side of the coin are people that are calling us and telling us, you know what, you go back down to the town and tell those people to tell you they got a job, get a bucket and a raise, because we are not doing well financially. So until things get better for us, we don't want them to get a raise. However, this may be hard for me to do, but I think I agree with Mr. Kenyon that we have to do what's best for Kane Town. And we deal with these people, we know what they're capable of. Can we find better people out there? Boy, I don't think so. So I will work for this. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Mr. Pollock? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I this is a tough one. I've I've been I've had conversations with you. I've had conversations with committees. I, in a lot of ways, I agree with Ms. Castro. I, I, from a process standpoint, I have a lot of problems with the way this was, was done. I was at the first committee in health when you rolled it out. And I voted yes at that point to move it along because you promised that we would have more information when it came through the committee process. And I saw in other committees, more information came out each time. When I got to finance, the information that I asked for was there. And I went with that assumption that you would live up to the promise, and you have. And, and I appreciate that. And um, at executive, I raised the same issue. I, I wish this had been brought up when we did the budgeting process. Even if we didn't know the exact numbers, if you had said, this is what I want to do, this is my plan. If we have the money, I'd like to do it. Or put together a longer plan of action. And I'm, I'm happy that we got more of that plan last month at Committee of the Whole. Getting that, the shell of the five-year budget let us know this is where we plan to go. Um, the other concern I had is the way it, the strata that we have of nine people getting something and the rest of our employees getting something different. The fact that you've explained that we haven't addressed this over the last six years is helpful. Also, the fact that we now do have that plan for the next five years, because I want to make sure that we are taking care of all of our employees, not just nine. And having that plan for where we intend to go for the next five years shows that we are going to address this. So next year, if this comes up again, whether it's just the executives or any type of, of salary increases, we know where we're going and we're going to do it. Some of us, about half this board is new. Um, doesn't excuse our mistakes, we make them. Uh, this is your first time going through this. I'm, I'm hopeful that you've learned because you've shown through the process that you have fixed some of those things. So I'm going to support it because I, I've seen that when the questions are asked, even if they weren't there at the beginning, you come up and you come with that support. So it, when we do this next year, we have a plan and I hope that we'll learn those lessons. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pollack. Uh, other, uh, Mr. Heyman? Yes, I'm going to vote yes for this uh, because I look at What's the cost going to be if we lose a few of these people in the process we're going to go through? We'll probably end up spending more money. So I'm going to keep mine short. That's okay. it. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Heyman. Uh, Ms. Allen? Um, for everyone who came in late to this, uh, our apologies because it was a, a, it, this process grew out of a furor where our constituents and the press would say, why in the world are you paying these salaries? We're, in a, we're having a terrible economy. And we wanted to, I, I wanted to be part of the process so that 
we would have answers to those questions. And I'm very grateful, as difficult as it was, that we followed it through. Uh, for one thing, we need to know who our directors are and, and what they do. Um, for another thing, we need to have a, a feeling of, of value. And I'm grateful for this kind of list so that we could at least strive for some sort of median. I don't know that we can ever pay our people enough to guarantee that they're going to stay here. People make life decisions based on lots of other things, their families and what their goals are and maybe how much money they want to make. But I don't want them to be in a position where they're saying, gee, I'm not appreciated. So we're, we're doing a, a small, a relatively small gift here to say we recognize the work and we're grateful that you are a good fit in the Kane County organization. And we want to say thank you and pay you some extra to show that we appreciate that you're a good fit as well. That's why it's easy to support this. Thank you very much, Ms. Allen. Uh, any final uh, thoughts? Uh, Mr. Foss, you'll have the last word. Okay. Um, I, I think uh, anybody in a coffee shop or after listening to the, the very biased robocall that went around, their quick knee-jerk reaction as a taxpayer to say, no, don't do it. You know, we don't make knee-jerk reactions here. We make informed decisions. Uh, we listened to extensive discussion, testimony, and finance, I think close to an hour or more's worth. Uh, we've been provided uh, competitive uh, comparisons to other similar sized counties for similar positions. Uh, we're only bringing these people up to actually just below the medium range. Um, and we've been provided extensive uh, data on our emails. So, you know, we're making this, uh, informed decisions here. Um, you know, I think the most, uh, in my opinion, the most diligent expenditure of taxpayer money is a small increase, a small investment in bringing these people up to the minimum range as opposed to losing them. A, a executive search costs about $20,000. That doesn't count the six months to 12 months of lost productivity and several months of just finding the new person. So if, uh, I didn't get a single call on this, but if I had, I would have answered that that person by saying this is the best use of your taxpayer money. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fraz. You know, a final thought before I ask uh, Mr. Cunningham to call the roll. Um, the process of making difficult decisions can either fracture a team or it can uh, bring us closer together. And I think that uh, it, it has been a difficult decision, difficult process, but I, I hope that, uh, I, I feel that it has brought us closer together. Uh, that we're exercising our authority uh, in a responsible way and in a, a, a collegial way. Uh, two things, just to confirm, uh, is that uh, I believe that everybody on this uh, board is united in the uh, desire and objective that the taxpayers will not pay one cent more uh, for these uh, raises uh, under the frozen property tax levy. And then, um, the idea about uh, making uh, all the process of the uh, wage increases at you know uh, all parts of the organization part of the budget process, I hear you loud and clear. Uh, I don't think that we were in that position this year, uh, but I believe because of our work together and our staff's work um, that we will be in the position to go forward doing it. What I also, I agree, uh, is even a better way. So. Uh, thank you very much for your consideration. And with that, Mr. Cunningham. Alan? Aye. Auger? No. Barrio? Yes. Castro? No. Donahue? Yes. Ford? Yes. Fraz? Yes. Gillum? Yes. Heyman? Yes. Hoshe? Yes. Kenyon? Yes. Kazarik? Yes. Lash? Yes. Lewis? Yes. Molina? Pollock? Yes. Sheffalo? No. Silva? Yes. Smith? Yes. Sterrick? Yes. Vasquez? Yes. Winicky? No. Okay, thank you. Um,
Okay, I believe that uh, uh, the motion passes. Uh, the vote is 17 to 5, uh, and I appreciate your support. Okay, um, next on the agenda, um, I believe that we go into executive session. I um, may have a motion and a second to go into executive session to discuss pending litigation, settlement of a claim, and release of closed session minutes. Uh, so moved by uh, Ms. Sterrett, second by Mr. Heyman. Um, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. Ayes have it. Okay. okay, so move to, so this is on uh, a number 14, 125. Motion is made by Ms. Castro, second by Mr. Kozarek. That's the settlement of tax case number 14, MR204. Any other conversation? If not, the clerk will call the roll. Ellen. Yes. 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 Yes.